Now, Dave Hemingway is a musician and songwriter who was a vocalist for the Hull-based band The Beautiful South and a member of the House Martins. Now, the man who once told us all he loved us from the bottom of his pencil case is back with a new sound and a new band, Sunbirds, who have their second release, Gene Kelly, out on the 28th of January. And he's on the line with us here today. How are you doing? I'm okay. How are you, Toby? Yep, I'm doing great. So the new song, Gene Kelly, what's the inspiration behind that song? Well, it's a bit of a homage to uh, the great man himself. It's uh, basically a fun song about going having a night out and then on your way back from the uh, hostelry, just uh, perhaps having a little dance on the way home, just like Gene Kelly used to. <laughs> <laughs> and there's some great lyrics in there, isn't there? Uh, yeah, well, hopefully, I mean... All the songs that are on the album and uh, that we put out, really, we like to think that they're, lyrically they're, they're good, you know, and uh, tell stories, and that's what we like to do. That's what we like to try to do anyway. Mm. I don't think I've ever heard a song before that rhymes Gary Lineker with vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully that is unique, and, uh, mm. yeah, we'll, we'll claim that one, I think. Yeah. And who wrote it? Was it you or a different member of the band? Or No, it's uh, that one was down to Phil, our guitarist, actually, Phil Barton. He is, does write the majority of the songs, but we all sort of chip in here and there, mm. you know, when we can. But, uh, yeah, so Phil wrote that one. Yeah. And there's a sort of country feel to the overall album as well, isn't there? Although I don't know if I'd narrow it down to just the one genre, because it's sort of mixed, isn't it? It is, but I, I understand why you say that. It, it mm. does have... A few of the songs do have that country sort of feel, but as you say, we, we try not to be sort of pigeonholed into that one particular sort of genre. Uh, we try and, uh, you know, there's some pop songs on there, some up-tempo songs as well, and uh, yeah. hopefully there's uh, quite a few diverse songs on there in the scope of the album. Mm. And the great thing about the album and this band in general is that it's a different sound from the Beautiful South, but it's not too different that the fans wouldn't like it. Yeah, it is a different sound, a different band, but mm. having said that, um, if I'm sort of uh, singing on it, then it's not going to be radically different. Yeah. Uh, I, I think if we try to be you know, radically different with the way uh, I am and the way, you know, I do the vocals, etc. I think we'd, uh, we'd fall on our, you know, on our face, to be honest. So yeah. I think it's not radically different, but it's different enough, hopefully, to keep people that were interested in Beautiful Self to have a listen to the new album. Yeah, definitely. And you've done many songs on the album. How do you choose which ones you're going to release as singles? Well, I think with any album, there are some that are more lend themselves to that than uh, than others. Uh, I mean, mm. some you could say are definitely going to be album tracks and that's what they will stay as album tracks. But hopefully of the 12 songs, there might be three or four or five even on them. Of those 12, that you think, well, that could be a single. And uh, mm. I, think they, I think they tend to stand out as singles rather than the ones which are more obviously just album tracks and tend to remain that way. Mm. Did you work on this album during lockdown or was it kind of before that? We managed to record it just before the very first lockdown. Um mm. Thankfully, because if we hadn't, then that lockdown would have caused a lot more problems than we had anyway. So um, in a way, we've had... We haven't been able to promote it because of the mm. obvious, you know, problems. But um, we're starting sort of afresh now, in a way. It's like it's we've only just done it, and uh, we, it's certainly these gigs we're going to to be doing to promote the album and to promote the band is hopefully to get people out uh, willing to come out again after mm. all this bad time and um, to go to gigs again and to come and have a listen to the songs and see what they think. We'd like that if we could. Yeah, that's great that you're doing shows now and I guess the thing is normally when you release a single, an album, you go and tour it. Is that maybe why you've sort of delayed releasing it until a couple of years after you've written it so that you can actually tour? Yeah, I think unfortunately that is the case. We mm. we couldn't tour it and I think it's important if you're, if you're going to put... Um, an album and singles out there, then I think you've got to back it up, hopefully, with a tour. And yeah. we were unable to do that, just like oh, so many bands couldn't do it. So um, it's a, just a question of timing, really. And so now we, we're going sort of full on to do as many gigs as we can and to mm. uh, get the songs out there and play them live and enjoy playing them live for the first time, really. Yeah. And what can we expect from the shows? Uh, well, there's four of us in the band, but for mm. the shows, we're going to add a few musicians in there as well. So we can 
play the album basically as well as we can that's on the record because um, I think it's important that if you go and see a see a band then the sound pretty much is to what they've recorded as and uh, mm. so that's what we're going to try and do to get, do the songs justice and that's uh, what we were intending to do yeah absolutely and is it just sunbird songs or different ones as well uh, it is sunbird songs uh, mm. a couple of covers but uh, crucially, there won't be any songs from our back catalogue or my back catalogue. There'll be none yeah. of the um, songs I've done before. It won't be new songs or cover versions of new songs, but uh, essentially, we're trying to get the new album and the new songs uh, that are associated with the album uh, out there so for people to come and have a listen to, hopefully. Yeah, definitely. So who else is in the band Sunbirds? Uh, we've got Phil Barton on guitar, who's a main songwriter, really. Yeah. Um, he was in a band with me the south and that's he brought a lot of the songs to the table and we've got on violin we've got laura who was in a band that used to support the south and we sort of met her through that and when mm. we decided that we wanted a violin in the band she was the obvious choice and also she does singing as well which it was a bit of a surprise to us really we didn't really know that she was singing so it was a really nice uh, surprise that She's a really good singer as well. So to complete it, we've got Mark on drums, who was a friend of Phil's. So um, mm. that's the main four of us. And we, as I say, we'll be enhancing that for the for the gigs. Yeah, definitely. And that's pretty cool that you've got a violinist because yeah. not a lot of bands have that luxury. No, true. Uh, but as I say, she's uh, vocals as well. So she's, mm. um, you know, she's a really good addition to the band. And, uh, you know, she, she's great. So hopefully, yeah, that that'd work out as well. Yeah. So let's take you back to the very start. When did it all kick off for you musically? Uh, well, back in the eighties, I was in bands in Hull. You know, Hull had a very sort of thriving uh, music scene at the time in the eighties, and from that, the uh, the House Martins came about. Uh, and um, I've been in bands with the original drummer of the House Martins, Hugh, Hugh Whitaker, yeah. in and out of bands in, in Hull. And uh, when he decided to leave the House Martins, for whatever reason, I'm still not sure why that was, he um, he recommended me. So they got in touch with me and uh, that's how I managed to get uh, in that band. Yeah. And the biggest hit for the House Martins was, of course, Caravan of Love. Yeah. It seems like that would have been quite a hard song to do, isn't it, a cappella? Is it quite hard to sort of keep the timing and harmony right? Well, to be honest, no. Um, mm. We did in the in the set. We did about three or four a cappella songs, and it was always quite uplifting, really, to sing that way. And also, I think it was quite unique for a, a four piece band. You know, well, uh, drums, bass, uh, guitar, and vocals with three harmonies to just sort of drop instruments and just put the instruments down and just sing a cappella. It was always yeah. very uh, uplifting, I thought. And uh, not something that you see every day. So it was it was a good part of being in the house, Martins, was the, doing the a cappella songs. Yeah, absolutely. And it nearly got to Christmas number one, didn't it? Yeah, just nearly, but mm. just uh, missed out by one way. I think it was uh, Jackie Wilson, uh, Reed Petit oh, yeah. was the one that beat it. Yeah, I think that would, that did it. Yeah. And apparently you did your own choreography on Top of the Pops, the band, right? Uh, yeah, well, Paul really was the main uh, man behind that. They used to wear... <laughs> develop a lot of the dancing whether you think it was good or bad it was all his fault so mm. <laughs> <laughs> there you go so yeah he used to do a lot of that yeah and after the house martins of course you went on to co-found the beautiful south how did that sort of come about when the house martins finished uh I don't know if Paul was thinking of doing, doing another band. He took a little bit of time out, but then he decided he was, and he asked me if I'd be interested in, you know, forming the band with him. Mm. And I, I obviously did, but I thought he meant as a drummer, but he obviously meant as a singer, which I, was a bit of a surprise to me as well. So, um, yeah, so we set about doing that band with a bit of a different lineup change to the House Martins, having what turned out to be three singers in the end, mm. uh, two male and one uh, female, and then... Uh, so, in a way, it was uh, quite different to the House Martin setup. Yeah, that's the interesting thing about the Beautiful South, I suppose. The three different singers, you never know what you're going to get. Yeah, well, that was a good aspect of the band because different songs, we could try different people out on them and yeah. see which songs worked for which vocalist. And it was a good um, thing to have, really, because if you've only got the one vocalist, then obviously every song is sung by that person but when you've got um, a few to choose from then you can sort of 
mix it around a bit and see which songs suit who. And uh, that works well for the band, I think. Yeah. Were there ever any songs that you recorded with one vocalist and then actually changed it to another? Uh, <clears throat> no, to be honest, by the time we got to recording, uh, we'd sorted out who was singing what. It, that was in rehearsal, for sure. In rehearsals, that used to happen where someone would try it and if it wasn't working out, and someone else would try it. But by the time we'd got to going to record the song, we pretty much knew who was singing what. But certainly in rehearsal, that used to happen where, um, you know, someone would try it, and if it wasn't working well, then uh, someone else would try it. So, yeah, that used to happen for sure. Yeah. And then you went on after The Beautiful South to do The South, which you could call it a tribute band, but I don't know if you could really call it that, given that you were in the original band. But yeah. you just sort of played Beautiful South songs under a different name, right? Yeah, it, essentially it was a tribute band, but as you say, there were a couple of us that were actually in The Beautiful South as well, so it was yeah. a strange one. But <laughs> for me, we, try, we did an album of original songs of The South, and I was always keen on doing that to perhaps do some more original songs but the rest of the band went went so keen on that they were happy enough doing beautiful south songs and in a way that's why i'm doing sunbirds now because i still felt that uh, much as i loved the beautiful south songs i was ready to sort of see if i had another set of new songs in me and another band and uh, another album so mm. that was really why i stopped doing the south because i just wanted to do some new songs and uh I had, to, I had to wait a while. I was a couple of years doing nothing, waiting for the right songs to come along. But now, hopefully, they have, and you know, I'm enjoying things again. Mm, yeah, definitely. And that pretty much brings us up to now, almost, when you've got this new band, Sunbirds. How did that band actually come about, and how did you meet each other and things? Well, as I say, I'd been uh, sort of uh, in my heels for a couple of years, just wondering what I was going to do next, if anything, you know, and yeah. I thought maybe I would do nothing. But uh, I was sort of hoping some uh, good songs w- would come along, which were... Because I'd been in two bands with such great songs and a great legacy, I, I think it was important to wait for the right songs to come along if I was going to do anything else. So when Phil, the guitarist, came to me and said, oh, I've got this collection of songs, what do you think? I was really uh, pleased and thought, yeah, mm. this... This sort of thing will give me the energy and the um, start start up again, and uh, it has been a bit like starting from scratch again, which is uh, quite exciting and nerve wracking. But it's a good it's a good thing as well to be going out there. It's like starting from uh, stage one again, you know. Yeah, and that's an interesting thing that you seem to have never really had a solo project. You've always wanted to be in a band. Yeah, I've always felt more comfortable being around other people. Um, <sighs> I sort of, um, I did sort of try a couple of things solo, but they never really worked. So I was, I've always been happier in an environment, you know, been around other people, other musicians, and uh, bouncing ideas off people. It's, it's, for me, it's always worked better that way. Yeah, definitely. And here's a bit of a cheesy question, maybe. Where did you come up with the name Sunbirds? Well, I think. Um, Anybody who's been in a band or started a band, one of the most difficult things <laughs> about it is finding a name that yeah. seems to suit you. And uh, that's certainly true, uh, you know, it's any band. So we, we kicked a few names around, and I think uh, it was Phil who came up with some birds, and uh, we just seemed to like it. <clears throat> it seemed to be a, a, a name which was sort of light-hearted and it, it, it was a bit of fun, mm-hmm. and uh, we want the band to be like that. So... Uh, um, it just seemed to suit us, and uh, we liked it, so that's what we went with. Yeah. And after this album and tour, what's coming up for the band? Any more projects? Yeah, well, it's certainly it's not a short-term project. We've got mm. new songs at the moment, which will hopefully turn into a new album by the end of this year, once we've got, got it all organised and things. And uh, we're certainly in it for the duration, and uh, see where we can go. And uh, certainly do two albums, maybe three, maybe four, who knows? But... Um, we're certainly keen on getting out there now and doing some gigs and getting some more records out there and um, seeing where it takes us. So it's certainly not a short-term project. It's a, it's more long-term and we're going to try and give it our best. Yeah. Do you listen to any other music at the moment that you're enjoying? Yeah, well, I love music, full stop, yeah. yeah. Um, I must say I, I, I tend to listen to uh, older stuff rather than the modern old stuff that's on 
you know, current radio now. But um, yeah. yeah, I still well, I just love music full stop. So I, I listen to anything really if it's any good. So mm. uh, and there's a lot of good stuff out there. Yeah, and let's just go through your tour dates here. We've got Sheffield on Thursday the third of February in just a couple of weeks, I guess. Then on to York, Manchester, London, Harpenden, Hull, of course, and Millham. I take it you're excited to go back to Hull. Yeah, definitely going back to the Adelphi Club, which. Uh, I played back in the 80s. It's uh, definitely uh, going back over, well, many years ago, obviously, and uh, mm. looking forward to that. And um, hopefully it'll be a good crowd in the Adelphi because it's always been a good club. Yeah. Well, where can we check out the new single Gene Kelly and also book tickets for the shows and keep up to date with the band? Well, we've got a website, which is sunbirds.co.uk, and that gives all the information you need, really, you know, about the band and can have a listen to a few of the songs and uh, also I assume you know the venues themselves you can get tickets from there but uh, certainly check out the website and uh, that gives information about the band and see what you think Great well thanks very much for joining us here this afternoon it's been great to talk to you right, Andrew thank you